So it's the conclusion time for the Bouquin Notaire, and as usual, we start with the cons. Well, right off the bat, the 460 grams does put it into a heavier type of a device category, which is something that you definitely have to keep in mind. The pen, while it is of excellent build quality and really, really a lovely design, and the performance is super precise and really, really good, unfortunately it is very top heavy it is very thick and it is made out of a slippery material when and when you combine all of these things it does become uncomfortable to use for people who are used to thinner and lighter pencils that is uh, so for me for example it is uncomfortable to use for uh, longer periods of time which is a shame because the multifunctionality the precision and all that kind of stuff really makes me want to use it but at the same time it's uncomfortable and slips out and it's top heavy and it's kind of a very frustrating kind of thing Notea doesn't have a system wide screen refresh option, and I think that's a miss. Uh, it really, if you offer an open Android kind of functionality that allows the user to start treating your tablet as an Android tablet, then if you're using an e ink or an e paper, which is inherently limited by a low refresh rate, you need to have that A2 mode there so that the Google Play at least can be somewhat of a more normal type of an experience. I'm not talking about playing video games, I'm not talking about uh, watching videos or anything like that, but browsing the internet and using the Google Play, if it's already there, it really does need that A2 mode and currently Notea doesn't have that and that's a con. Uh, the default note-taking app has quite limited capabilities, you know, limited brushes, no colors to speak of, like not even a, a shades of gray, no layers, nothing like that. So it's a very, very limited note-taking uh, default experience, even though uh, it's it feels really good and writes really good, the capabilities are very, very limited. The same thing actually continues on to the EPUB band, especially PDF side of things, because yeah, on EPUBs you cannot annotate, you cannot write on the EPUBs themselves and on PDFs while you can write you cannot actually uh, mark the text. So neither of the reader size of things are complete and I think that both EPUB and PDF they really really could benefit and should get a good overhaul to expand the capabilities so that you can have much more robust functionalities. At the moment it's very very limited. UI itself could also use um, a, a dose of refinement and optimization to make it a little bit more less uh, more streamlined and less steppy. Android 8.1 is de facto now um, quite an older system to use in 2021 and at certain times you definitely feel it. Google Play registration is basically locked into and you're forced to use a non two-step verified account to do the initial Google Play activation of the device. Once it's activated and registered, then you can log in with your normal two-step verified secure account. But still, this step just doesn't seem... I don't know why is it necessary. Uh, I haven't seen that on other devices, so I'm not entirely sure why it's necessary on this one, but it, it is there. And uh, for me personally, that's a con. Battery life is only okay, despite a very large battery of 4000 milliamps that has added to the thickness and to the weight of the device. And I think that that, in the grander scheme of things, has to be taken as a bit of a con. Overall performance, even though it does have that standard 1.8 gigahertz quad-core CPU, it has only 2 gigabytes of RAM and I think it clashes there. Plus, again, that older system, Android 8.1, everything kind of combined does make the uh, Notea a little bit on the slower side of things as far as the system-wide performance goes, So, such as opening up apps and installing apps and all that kind of stuff. It's a bit slower than what I would expect from the spec sheet. And now on to the pros. Well, as I've said, I really love the design of the Notea and the ergonomics, especially of the backside. And when you actually combine with the uh, um, gyroscope and the ability to rotate all around, it 
is an overall very nice and pleasing to look at a design, but more importantly, very ergonomically uh, comfortable device to use for extended periods of time. I am a very big proponent of the same color frame as the screen because that simply makes the device better in the long term. Reading, writing, doesn't matter. It's just better to do it that way and Notea has it, so that's a good thing. Excellent writing, latency, feel and overall experience. The precision that is obtained, especially with the default pen and the default nib, is really, really good. So uh, writing on the Notea is a very pleasant affair, even though uh, the pen, as I mentioned, because it's thick and kind of top balanced, uh, it can be a tiring affair. But once I switch to the pen that fits my needs a little bit better, so thinner and lighter and more well balanced, for example, this thin Stadler, um, then the writing experience was absolutely fantastic and uh, it's one of those devices like a Remarkable 2 for example I just want to write on it and very shortly you forget that you're writing into a device you're writing onto a surface which is not something that happens often but Notea has that magic combination for sure. Despite its shortcomings the pen itself uh, finds itself in as a con and as a pro and in this case as a pro because of its quality, multifunctionality, and uh, exceptional precision that it has. I know that I've mentioned it several times, but this nib is really, 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 really good. Um, and also, I am a big fan of these three buttons and their multifunctionality, and the ability that it actually, the pen, can easily transform into a remote control for this device. Now, if only Miracast worked as properly as it should, so that you can cast you know to a projector and then control it via the pen that would be completely fantastic but as we've seen at least for me personally I had quite a lot of problems with getting Miracast to work anywhere in fact I couldn't get it to work at all now if you're lucky and if that's just my case and my set of circumstances maybe um, but in if that's the case and your Notea works perfectly by casting then this pen also doubles as a remote control for your tablet, which is an excellent thing to have. EMR compatibility of the screen. So even though the default pen is active, it's also passive at the same time. And that means that I could switch to Stettler or any other pen for that matter and use it and then enjoy my Notea that way. Gyroscope is there and it allows you to orient your Notea however you want and the design is made in such a way that equal width of the uh, bezel around the screen provides an uninterrupted viewing, reading, writing experience which is most definitely a plus. Despite um, uh, many shortcomings of the PDF reader, the PDF reader does have adequate formatting options and that scaling, while it could definitely use the um, uh, aspect ratio lock option, uh, even so uh, with the combination of the auto orientation, especially in the landscape format, it works as it should and it makes it very, very painless to actually just flip around the uh, tablet and zoom to width and read on like that. In maybe like one or two steps you get um, previously unreadable uh, PDF because it's like super small and super pale or whatever. You just enlarge it, put it in landscape and continue reading and that's a very very good thing to see which sounds simple but you don't have it on uh, all platforms so definitely not a standard unfortunately but on Notea, it's there. While not complete, the USB OTG functionality is quite good. And I was able to run two USB st uh, sticks in, in um, the USB hub and a wired keyboard and everything worked fine. And furthermore, the file transfer and access to the USB sticks was rock solid, always present and very, very quick. So I didn't have to transfer files. I could actually access my USB sticks normally and uh, yeah, it worked very, very quickly and stably. So that's what you need from a USB OTG uh, as far as storage capabilities go at least. And then the big daddy-o of all, which is the global handwriting mode, which is a game changer. There's no other way around it. And it puts Notea basically square into a category of its own 
known as far as the e-ink or e-paper world goes. There are no other devices out there that can offer this uh, this fast uh, level of latency of writing in previously unsupported third-party note-taking apps such as OneNote, Evernote or Nebo. Um, in all of them, you can write almost as fast as you would in the native uh, note-taking uh, app and incomparably faster than on any other device currently as far as e-paper uh, world is concerned. This is a really good thing because now, because of this update, no other competitor has a single excuse not to figure out a way how to do that. So really, really good to see that. And finally, you simply have to take into consideration that Notea, despite all of its uh, goods and bads and all that kind of stuff, all that stuff that you've seen and uh, exclusive global note-taking capabilities, cost less than pretty much any of their major competitors at 400 euros. Remember, 10.3 inch tablet with all of this stuff there and the global writing capabilities um, for 400 euros plus shipping and VAT, of course, that's that's what it goes when you buy from a non-global uh, uh, kind of retailer, but it's definitely cheaper than the competitors. So how to summarize the Bookin Notea? Well, Notea is certainly not a perfect device, and I do wish that the pen was thinner and more well-balanced, and I do wish that the user interface was a little bit better organized, and I do wish that it was running Android 10 instead of Android 8.0 one and uh, I do wish that the battery life was a bit better I do wish that it was a bit lighter um, and all of these kind of things uh, at the end of the day after spending pretty much three weeks now with uh, the the Bukin Notea by my side, I'm left with a very, very powerful and positive feeling. It feels excellent to write on and uh, basically spend time writing on. And I keep banging on about that precision, but that is the primary feel that I'm being left with after spending so much time with the uh, uh, Bukin Notea and after so many devices that I've actually used because this is kind of in context with all with all devices that I've been using. It really does differentiate itself in um I think the best way to say it is that it feels more refined because of that precision and calibration and how it captures your handwriting. That's something that's a little bit different, but it feels significant to me at least when compared to other devices out there. The end result is that uh, what I write on Notea is closest to my original handwriting that I will have on a piece of paper. And that is most certainly not the case with any of the devices remarkable to include it and remarkable to uh, uh, users will know that that once you start writing it's like it feels great and it's all like that but doesn't really capture your handwriting exactly the way you do it it's it's nice and it's fast and it's all of that but it's not the same thing on the notea that's one thing that i've experienced for the first time where it's actually almost mirrored precision of what I would normally write on a piece of paper. And that's a new thing for me. I haven't experienced that before. And another thing that actually happens because of that precision is that you, for me at least, I seem to form more easily a connection with the surface that I'm writing on. And then I get again that feeling uh, that I'm not writing into a device and that the device is interpreting my input, but that I'm actually writing on a surface of something and it just happens to be a device so that is a major difference it may sound silly but for me personally that's the impression that i'm being left with that's the strongest impression that i'm being left with after these three weeks spent with the booking notaire and to put the icing on top of the cake of the the writing experience you have the global writing mode which squarely puts it into a category of its own because no other e-paper device 
does that or is capable of even coming close to that. So that's a huge positive takeaway from the experience as well. If you are looking for an all-rounder device uh, um, that is going to be primarily a reader with some note-taking capabilities in usage, then I don't think that Notea is the right choice uh, at the moment. Maybe they will expand it and upgrade it, but at the moment as it is now, it has fairly limited uh, reader capabilities, more so than I would find acceptable so some of the reader limitations definitely would have to be addressed. However, if your primary needs are uh, note-taking, not drawing, not sketching and stuff like that, but note-taking, writing, and you don't have the need for layers, you don't have the need for uh, other colors and grayscales and all that kind of stuff, but just writing, uh, then yeah, Notea definitely fits the bill. But if you your needs are note-taking and you're coming already from an environment such as uh, OneNote, Evernote or Nebo, and you want to transfer to this, well, then there's really no competition because the only product that can effectively do that right now as an e-ink device or an e-paper device is the Bookie Notea. No other device can actually handle these apps uh, in an acceptable manner. Notea can. I really hope that they keep improving the platform further and further uh, because it definitely could benefit a lot more from a much more powerful and complete reader experience, especially both EPUB and PDF. And if they do allow Notea to actually grow and fulfill its potential, because it's definitely not fulfilling its potential right now, uh, then it could easily become one of the best all-rounders on the market and that others should most definitely fear. At the moment, it's not there quite yet, and it needs quite a bit of work to actually get there, but it definitely has the potential, it has the juice, it has the, uh, the capability to do all of those things. It's just the software sides and optimizations and functionalities that need to come into it uh, to basically release it and make it fulfill its potential. Um, and it certainly does have potential to get there quite easily. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell to get notified when new videos come out on My Deep Guide. Um, as I've demonstrated, for those who were interested, My Daily Organizer works as it should on the Notea as well. So yay, we can add Notea to the list of supported devices for the My Daily Organizer. Now, a quick note also, My Daily Organizer 2022 is now entering final stages of development and is entering the testing phase which means that the scheduled release, which was early September, is still on time. And uh, unless something really, really crazy happens, it should be uh, available on um, early September, probably first week of September or something like that. I'll keep you posted. So remember to check out the My Daily Organizer if you don't know what it is. There's a playlist link down below, a couple of videos to introduce you to the product that I made. And yeah, check it out to see if that's something that you might find useful or not. Quite a few people find it useful, so maybe you enjoy it too. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye!